okay, in this short presentation, I'm going to show you a little bit about relational databases and how we can create relationships. But first of all, I want to explain to you why we create relationships. So I've got here a simple table. Okay, here we see that we've got a, a small table here to hold scores for students. And we can see that this student here, John, we've got two entries in here, one for a word test and one for a PowerPoint test. So that's this student here. Now, this basically means every time uh, this student is going to take a test, that's going to be another entry. So, for example, if he was doing an Excel test, we have another entry here, A103, student ID, the name. And each time we'd have to record the, uh, the address, the telephone number. And if this was a school database, we'd have a lot more in there. So if this was an Excel test, and let's say he got an 89 for that score. Okay, so we can see here already that every time we're recording a score, that we're, say, we're duplicating the data that we're uh, recording many, many, many times. And this is what we want to try and avoid in uh, a database, because the, if we keep duplicating the data we're saving, then the database is going to get very big very, very quickly, making it slower to uh, load, slower to run, and slower to search. So we want to try and speed this up by avoiding duplication of data. So to do this, we have what we call relational databases. And basically what a relational database will do, it's going to split this table up into smaller components. For example, if I was to take this column here, and then I would take this and this one, so the student ID, the test type, and the score. Then I can make a separate data, a separate table for this information, which is what I need to keep recording, and a separate one for the student information. So let's say we make that one blue. Okay, so these will be a separate table. So let me show you how we would do that. Let's move this up here. So basically, I will create a smaller table for the information of the students, and we'll call this student table. And in this table, we would hold only uh, the SID, the student identification, uh, the name. And we would also hold the telephone number. And again, if we were saving more data, then that would also be added in this table here as well. So I'm just going to take the student John, for example. So his SID is A103. Name is John. Oh, I've got the address. Okay, so we have telephone number and address there. And then we'd have another table. We'll take our red table now. And this will be the tests table. And in here, we will need the SID, which is the student ID, so we can identify which student did the test. We will need the test type, so T type, and we will need the score. And for example, for John here, he's got two, and he's got three entries now. We would have here A103, uh, the test is Word. Score was 87, A103, PowerPoint, score was 92, and again, A103, and that was Excel, and the score was 89. So, again, we've got this duplication of the student ID, but the difference is that this is only one field that we're duplicating. So we would have many fields um, in, in the scenario up here. This is known as a flat file, by the way. So we'll call that as a, as a flat file. Okay, because we've got one uh, database which has everything inside. This is going to be our relational database. Now, when we see the number A103, the only way that we can know who this person is is if somehow we link this thing here, this column here, student ID, with this column ID here, the student ID, 
so that whenever we see this number, it will refer to this table, find that information, and get that student's name. So to do that, we create what is known as a relationship. So we link these two up. And that's our relationship. Okay? So that would be a relationship. Okay, so basically that's what the relational database is. So we're going to go back now to database and we can see here that I've got three tables in this database and this is a result of uh, the question paper that I've started, this one here. And this one basically asked me to create uh, these three tables. So I had the boards table which I imported, the trees table and the locations table. And I'm currently now on this section here which is telling me to create a one to many relationships uh, between the tables and it's got here between the tree ID field in the trees table and link that to the tree ID field in the boards table and then another one it says the location code field in the locations table so the link to link that to the location code field in the trees table so I'm going to go back to my database and the first thing I need to do is to open the relationships section so I'm going to go to database tools and from here, I'm going to click on Relationships. Now, I need to add my table, so I'm going to right-click, Show Table. And this shows me this little table here. And I'm going to click on the tables that I want to add. So that's basically all three of them. I want the boards, locations, and trees. And then I can close this window. Now, it doesn't matter which order these are in or how they're mixed up. That's not at all relevant. What I'm going to do is expand these so I can see all the fields. That way, no fields are hidden from me. And I like to line them up. OK, now I need to create my relationship. So the question said, I want to create a relationship between the trees table and the tree ID and the boards table tree ID. So from the trees table, I've got the tree ID here. And from the boards table, the tree ID here. So we can see here that this tree ID in the trees table is a primary key. I can see that from the key. So I'm going to click on this one, which is a primary key, hold the mouse button down, and drag that and drop it on top of the tree ID in boards. And when I let go, I get this dialog box. And this just confirms what I'm doing. So from the trees table, the tree ID, to the boards table, the tree ID, I'm creating a one-to-many relationship. I can click Create. And there we go. That line there shows that these two have now have a relationship. Now, in the next part of the question, it wants the location code from locations and the location code from trees. So again, I'm going to go back to my database. I'm going to go to, there's a location code here and location code here. So in this case, I'm going to take the primary key. I'm going to drag that over to the location code here. And that's my confirmation. Okay, so I click on create. Now, if I want to show... Uh, screenshot evidence, I can simply double click on the relationship that opens this dialog box and I can take a screenshot of this. Now what is a one-to-many relationship? If I go back to this example which I showed you before, let me just click OK here. So if we have a look at this example here, in this side here we've got the student ID, uh, we've got in the students table, we've got the student ID and this is a primary key, okay? So the student ID here is a primary key. That one, so I'm just going to put a star in it. On this table, and we, in here, we would have, for example, the other students as well, only one time. For example, A109 is Mary. And we would have her details in here. Now, we could only have this student ID one time in this table. It cannot be duplicated. In this table, though, where I've linked the SID, the student ID, with this student ID, we can see that we can have the student ID many times. It's not a primary key. So from here, this is a one-to-many relationship. Over here, this one here, this student ID, is known as a primary key. And because it has a relationship with another table so that we know that over here this student ID is a primary key in another table 
This is known as a foreign key. So those are good terms for you to know. So the foreign key is basically a field name where in another table where it's, which is linked to, that field name is a primary key. Okay, so you've got your primary key, which you could only have one time and cannot be repeated in, in this table. And that's linked to the same field name with the same data, but it's a foreign key because we can duplicate this key many times in this table, as we can see here, A103 and A103. Okay, so if we go back, we can see this here. So this one here is our primary key, and over here, the tree ID is a foreign key. This one is a primary key, and that one is a foreign key. And that's basically my relationships created. So when I click on close, or I can click save first, but if I don't, and I click on close, it's going to tell me, are you sure? Do you want to save? And I'm going to say yes. And that's it, we've created our uh, relationships between the tables. And if you want to go back to that at any point, you can just go to database tools, relationships, and they are there.